According to a new survey, most MSNBC and CNN voters believe that disinformation is pushing Hispanic voters to the Republican Party. The survey by WPA Intelligence found 57% of MSNBC viewers and 54% of CNN viewers said the spread of disinformation was causing Hispanics to vote red. Meanwhile, 16% of MSNBC voters and a fifth of CNN voters said Hispanics have internalized racism and a desire to fit into white society, which is causing them to lean Republican. The survey also asked how many CNN and MSNBC voters themselves have bought into false stories. Joining us now to weigh in on this data is Abraham Enriquez. He's the president of Bienvenido. Welcome, Abraham. Good morning. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Yeah, great to have you. Uh, what do you make of this? Is uh, our Hispanic voters being tricked by lies and misinformation in order to join the Republican Party? Is that what's happening? Yeah, look, Robbie, I don't think I would give uh, misinformation or disinformation too much credit. Um, if you know the Hispanic community, you know, at Bienvenido, we have dis discussions and conversations with Latinos all across the, the country. Um, and poll after poll after poll shows that the number one issue that Latinos care about is, is the economy, right? Uh, and inflation as it has reached a 40-year high has really crushed uh, budgets, Hispanic budgets across the country. Um, and when you look at the Hispanic family, we're a multi-generational family. Latinos have more children, therefore more mouths to feed. Um, and we have less money to be able to do that. And so as midterms are, are, are coming up, you know, I, I think that Latinos uh, really are starting to see that the Democrat Party hasn't done a good enough job uh, to, to provide economic relief and economic opportunity uh, within the Latino community. So uh, while Democrats might, you know, uh, throw the ball and throw the blame at misinformation, what it really comes down to is they haven't really been able to provide policies that Latinos have been able to feel within their homes. So uh, I think what we're going to see in November is uh, Hispanics aren't really voting for party like we've seen in the past previous years, but more so voting for policies and candidates that have been able to really articulate the importance of conservative leadership um, and fiscal responsibility that provide uh, economic opportunity for Latinos all across America. Hey, Bram, I definitely think you're right about the focus on policy. It seems that both parties, for different reasons, have abandoned the conversation about policy. I think Democrats, because their donor base doesn't want them to follow through on the things that it says that it wants for people and working class people, and Republicans largely have leaned into a lot of the culture war uh, conversation to avoid their unwillingness to address some concerns. I remember particularly that, uh, reading that uh, Latinos were the most underinsured group in the country, and I wonder what, if any, policy prescriptions have come down the pike that potentially might have an effect on voters uh, in midterms or in the next uh, general election cycle? Well, look, uh, Latinos are very hardworking, right? And I think the, the important thing to, to note here is that from 2010 to 2019, uh, the, the poverty rate within Latinos dropped by 40 percent, meaning that we're a very mobile, uh, upward mobile demographic, right? So when it comes to political outreach and candidates coming into our community, we want candidates that, that speak to our aspiration uh, and not make us feel like victims. Um, and in this past uh, you know, election cycle, gearing up to the midterm election, to truly see the difference in how Democrats are outreaching to Latinos, really sticking to that rhetoric of uh, victimhood and the need for government assistance, the need for government care. Uh, and the Republican Party really has shifted gears and started talking more uh, to Latinos in a way that they we're not seeing the need to assimilate to a culture that really isn't ours. We're truly met where we're at uh, with talks about economic opportunity. Uh, it talks about how conservative leadership, again, uh, is a leadership in past conservative White House that has uh, allowed Latinos to see like the lowest unemployment rate, um, the highest number of uh, four-year universities within Latino students. Now more than ever, Latinas are opening up businesses uh, than any other uh, demographic. So I think that when politicians are are able to go into the community uh, and really sound off policies that have made room for those uh, economic growth. It's how you win the Latino vote. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because despite working so hard, they're still the most underinsured uh, ethnic group in the country. Something that really uh, resonated with voters in Nevada, for example, when Bernie won that state and the culinary union rank and file broke away from the leadership, particularly on the issue of health care. I think a lot of folks are concerned, especially small business owners, that their ability to start a business, to grow their business is really impacted negatively by the responsibility of employers to provide health care for their employees. And a lot of folks 
especially in the business community, are increasingly understanding that a universal healthcare system is a, is a, a real boon um, for entrepreneurship. But I, I'd like to get some other uh, put some other poll results to you if I could. Uh, the Texas Tribune reports that immigration and border security are a leading cause for voters to flip from Democrat to Republican. The predominantly Hispanic border town, Terrell County, had only 12% of its registered voters cast ballots in the Republican primary back in 2014. Fast forward to today, and that number has nearly tripled. In 2022, 31% of the county cast ballots in the GOP primary, compared to just 10% in the Democratic primary. Meanwhile, the Wall Street Journal reports that working class Latino voters have their eyes on one thing, as you've said, Abraham, the economy, causing another split from Team Blue. However, Democrats do have a leg up on the issue of abortion. According to new polling, inflation was the main concern for Latino voters at 48 percent, while women's reproductive rights and abortion rights were the top concern for 28 percent of those surveyed. Addressing gun violence, mass shootings and improving wages were the third most mentioned concerns. So obviously, you know, we've all been following the polls, the prospects of the Republican Party, the Democratic Party for the November election. Things were looking pretty good for Republicans, I would argue, a couple weeks ago, and now less so for a variety of reasons. Um, I, there is some evidence, right, that the Dobbs decision has moved people back into the Democratic fold. Um, the economy maybe has improved in, in, by some measures, uh, getting a little pressure off Joe Biden. Uh, you know, what do you make of, of how, or how could Republicans, you know, kind of close the deal and actually take back um, uh, uh, power in the midterms, uh, given the way things are going? You know, I don't give too much credit to the Supreme Court ruling, of, you know, leaning Latino voters specifically to the Democrat Party. Uh, and I'll tell you why. I think that when it comes to the pro-life issue and women's reproductive um, uh, stances, when you talk to Latinos, I think whether wherever you sit uh, within left or right or even in, this, in the middle, one thing that we can all agree on is that America, for a very, very long time, we've had the most... Uh, extreme radical abortion laws in the books, right? I think when you talk to most Hispanics, um, Democrat registered Hispanics, they even say, yeah, my party has embraced this late term abortion uh, rhetoric that I don't agree with. Uh, so while the Dobbs decision maybe did sidetrack a little bit of, of uh, RNC outreach and Republican outreach, I think when you talk to Latino voters like the voters in South Texas, they're still very much so pro-life, and they still believe uh, in the importance of, 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 you know, saving and protecting unborn children. And, and the Democrat Party really hasn't done a good job of laying a clear boundary of, of where it, when, it, when it becomes too extreme. And this idea that you should embrace late-term abortion, sometimes even minutes after birth, I think that's something that doesn't sit well with Latino voters. Uh, we talk about, you know, South Texas uh, and how uh, open border policies and border security has really... Uh, push Latino voters to embrace Republican candidates. Uh, Myra Flores down there, for instance, uh, flipped a Democrat seat that was under Democrat control for over 150 years. She did that by running a very solid campaign that focused on the issues of security. So when you go down to these rural cities, right, where, where most Latinos um, are at, things that they're talking about are inflation, the economic crisis, and border security. They're not so much talking about uh, this pro-life issue, right? So I think that uh, we're still, we still have enough time from now to November for border security uh, and the economic crisis to be the leading a charge into why Latinos will be voting uh, conservative um, more than in, in previous years. Well, I, I do have to note that, of course, the term late-term abortion is a, was invented by Republicans. It's not a term that Democrats have embraced. Only a very small fraction of abortions happen after the first few weeks of the second trimester, uh, much less in the third trimester. And when abortions do regretfully happen in the third trimester after a mother has carried a baby to almost term, it's overwhelmingly because of harms to the mother's life. Uh, the baby itself is not viable and will be born into a great deal of pain. And unfortunately, what's at stake right now is whether these conservative policies will prevent women from making the kind of health decisions for themselves and their children with this threat of a federal abortion ban that overwhelmingly voters of every demographic group uh, reject. So we'll see how that plays out. We really appreciate you uh, joining us here today, Abraham.
Thank you, and happy Hispanic Heritage Month. Happy Hispanic Heritage Month. We'll have more rising after this.